Welcome back to 3 Talk. Growing up as the youngest of 13 children, Cindy Zidwa said it was the sense of belonging and entitlement that made her who she is today. A driven woman who goes for what she wants and doesn't let obstacles stand in her way. Today, she is the CEO of the second largest black accounting firm in South Africa. Welcome, Cindy Zidwa. Thank you you welcome, Cindy. You, you qualified as a chartered accountant 23 years ago. Yes, now, that makes back, me feel old. Uh, no, you're not <laughs> old at all. Back then, uh, growing up in Mtata uh, and, and, and being surrounded by, uh, you know, kind of um, very driven people, but at the same time, very laid back people. What, what was it that for you made you realize that accounting, chartered accountant, this is where I'm going to be? I think that is the part of my life that was very lucky because it is my mother who decided that all her kids must study accountancy so that they can find work in offices, do clerical work instead of doing some domestic work. Mm. So basically it was the vision and the dream of my mother. And uh, following that uh, is that my elder brother started to learn about the chartered accountancy profession, even though I knew about it. So then they would come back and tell me, register this, do that. Yeah. And luckily I was a very submissive child because I believe they had my interest at heart. So basically for me, becoming a chartered accountant was a natural progression. But it wasn't something that you had dreamt about. It wasn't something no. that you When I was knew. young, I wanted to be a doctor, you know, so that's really what I wanted to be. Yeah. But then, as I'm saying, during those days, and luckily, I think I grew up at a time when commercial schools were starting. So then we had Zmele Junior Secondary School. So I started accountancy from Standard 6. And as I'm saying, then we were following the vision of our mother at that time because she felt if her kids are working, she did not want them to be involved in domestic science and whatever. She knew what it was her dream that we must sit in offices and do typing, mm. bookkeeping work. So that's how it started. And then it just piled up on top of that. When I was uh, uh, introducing you, I said that you're a driven woman, but also because you are uh, from a family of 13 siblings, uh, you grew up with a sense of entitlement and a sense of belonging. Yes. What, what does that mean? What it means is that I grew up in an environment where I felt I belonged, which made me never to be able to hold back on my dreams or what I wish to actually accomplish. And secondly, if I'm saying entitlement, I felt I was entitled to derive the best from everyone around the family, around the family table, the attention that I actually needed, and that translated itself to the world, through the real world that I actually worked on. Because whatever I did, I felt I deserved equal attention. I also deserved equal opportunity. And therefore, I was actually going out for it all the time without ever doubting or having anything within me that's a negative voice that says, you can't go there. Mm. I've never had that. Mm. Mm. And you're probably very lucky because you, you employ many, many women. Yes. And, and you, when you do speak to a lot of women, you find a lot of negative voices coming through. Yes, I think negative voices are our own enemies because they are people who, even though they think of something that they can accomplish, something tells them, uh-uh, it's not for them. And I think that's what needs to stop. And uh, others, for instance, would be intimidated even just looking into the symbols that kids are getting from schools. If others are getting all A's and others are sitting in E's or D's or C's, they immediately feel, ah, we're not good for this world. And that's the negative voice you mustn't have because whatever you want to achieve, for you to achieve it, it's entirely up to you. Mm. If you have to jump that high, it's up to you to jump that high. No one can actually tell you how low or how high you must jump. Mm. And people, they start to look into the bars that others are raising for themselves and use those bars applicable to them. And that's what actually is killing the progression that we actually need in our country. But is it not also because, Cindy, uh, a lot of us did not come from uh, parents like yours who, uh, who had a vision? A lot of us come from uh, parents who had no vision. Some of us came from childless, uh, parentless homes yes. or single homes where mm. it was very, very difficult where, and even grew up with a lot of negativity coming from parents, coming from siblings. And inevitably, you go into the world with all those voices and it's very hard to get rid of them. Yes, but I think there's a very important principle that people must understand. All of us, we've got different backgrounds, but what we become 
is not linked to our backgrounds. Mm. The background is only 10% 10, 10 of it. I think Stephen Covey puts it nicely in the th uh, theory of stimuli and response to say life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you generally respond to it. So there are people who are very successful, but they are coming from very poor backgrounds. Mm. And there are people who are coming from wealthy backgrounds, but they are very unsuccessful. Mm. So at the end of the day, it's how people respond to the circumstances that are presented, that life throws at them. How they respond is entirely up to them. It's really their choice. Mm. So which is why then we've got stories of people who pass and even become CAs, but they were studying under the bed because they were afraid of the third force at the time. Mm. And there were no electricity and whatever. And there are people who would use that as an excuse to say, no, I could never finish mm. because my circumstances were like that. So why is it that we are all reacting differently? So at the end of the day, it says the test the hunger to succeed must come from within. It must not be affected by the circumstances around us. Mm. What, what are some of, because you, you speak as if, you know, not as if, you are hugely successful. You are a phenomenal woman. But along the way, even though uh, you, you, you have this resilience in you, there must have been challenges. Challenges is the name of the game. Obstacles, for me, I understand obstacles as something that needs to be overcome. Mm. An obstacle is not something that's supposed to block you, but it's something that says, hey, come on, jump on me, go, 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 let's see. So I think everything you do, whether you start a firm, whether you are studying, whether you are building a business or anything that you want to venture in, you will have obstacles, you will have barriers, mm. but then how you must look at them is to say, wow, it's a challenge, wait for me, I'm here. Instead of saying, oh yeah, that's a barrier, it's a little bit difficult, Ish, let me try something else, because you will find barriers wherever you go. Yeah. There is no happily ever after, it's all about how we're actually jumping. Yeah. Mm. You, you really are quite an incredible woman, and that's why you are so successful. Thank you, Nadine. And I have no doubt that you are just going to go from strength to strength. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much, Cindy, for coming on to 3Talk. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Nadine.